Hello and welcome to Geology, a channel dedicated to making concepts in biology simple, easy to understand and interesting. Today we are going to discuss the inheritance of blood group. But before that, let us recollect the two major systems of blood group types. One is the ABO blood type where on the basis of the presence or absence of antigen A and B, there are A, B, A, B and O blood groups. A and B have the antigen A and B respectively. A, B has both and O has neither of them. The next one is the RH blood type where on the basis of the presence or absence of the antigen RH, there are two types of blood groups, RH positive and RH negative respectively. Combining the two together, there are totally eight types of blood groups. O positive, O negative, A positive, A negative, B positive, B negative, AB positive and AB negative. If you would like to know more about the blood group, do visit my previous video all about blood groups and transfusion. Let us look at some basic concepts in genetics. We know that a gene is an active portion of the DNA coding for a protein and it is present at a particular location in the chromosome. The generally genes have two variants. For example, here this gene A has a variant A and the other variant is small a. These variants of the same gene which are present at the same location on the chromosome are called alleles. Mostly genes, as I said, have two alleles, but sometimes there are genes which have more than two alleles. Those are known as multiple alleles. Now, our ABO blood group system that we are now talking about has multiple alleles. The gene coding for the antigen on the RBC has three alleles, IA, IB and IO or small i. Hence, the ABO blood group system has multiple alleles. The next concept that we have to look at is homozygous and heterozygous. So every individual receives one allele from the mother and one from the father. If both the alleles that an individual has are of the same type as in this case here which with two capital A's or both the alleles are small a's, such individuals are called homozygous for capital A or for small a. Similarly, if one allele is capital A and the other is small a, that is, if both the alleles are of two different types, then such an individual is called heterozygous for capital A and small a. The third concept that we need to know about is codominance. So generally, in a heterozygous condition, one of the alleles expresses itself. The one which expresses itself is called the dominant allele. The one which gets masked is called the recessive allele. In case of homozygous situation, if the homozygosity is for the dominant alleles, then obviously the dominant expression takes uh, is, is visible. But if the homozygous alleles are the recessive alleles. It is only then that the recessive trait gets uh, demonstrated or it gets uh, expressed. Now, in case of codominance, that is in heterozygous relationships, if the two alleles that are present are not completely dominant, but they both completely express themselves. Then such a situation is known as codominant. So codominant is exemplified in the AB blood group, where IA and IB both of them express themselves completely in each other's presence. And IO is the recessive allele, which needs to be in a homozygous state, and only then it is able to express itself. So in case of a person with a A blood group, his genotype could be either both IA if he is homozygous or 
IAIO if he is heterozygous. Similarly, in case of B, it is either both IB or IB and IO. However, in case of AB blood group, the person has IA and IB and both of them express themselves. In case of blood group O, neither IA nor IB are present. What is present is homozygous I, uh, small i or IO. Because in the human population, there are three different alleles for the surface protein gene, IA, IB and IO. Now let us look at inheritance of blood group with the help of some examples to get the concepts more clear. So let's take in the first case a father who is homozygous A that is has a genotype IAIA and a mother who is heterozygous B who has a genotype IBIO. Now during the formation of gametes the father produces sperms which are all of the same type having the allele IA in them. Whereas when the mother produces ova, half the number of her ova would have IB as the allele whereas the other half is of a different type with IO as the alleles. Now during mating, if the first Type of sperms combined with the first type of uh, ova we get IAIB as the offsprings if in case the same sperm combines with the other ova we get IAIO when the second half or the other other sperm combines with the first type of ova we get IAIB and if it combines with the second ova we get IAIO so what would be their blood groups? The offsprings with IAIB have a blood group AB whereas the offsprings with IAIO have the blood group A. Hence when we look at the probability AB the probability of having AB blood group is 50% whereas the probability of having A blood group is 50%. What is interesting is that there is no probability of the offsprings to have a B blood group even though the mother's blood group is B. Now look at example 2. Here we have a father who is heterozygous A that is IAIO and the mother who is homozygous O that is IOIO. -O. We know that O is always homozygous isn't it? We saw that earlier because O is a recessive gene. Okay, now while the formation of gametes, the father produces sperms which are of two different types having a genotype IA and the other having an, an allele IO. While the mother produces ova which are all of the same type having the allele IO. Now there are many people who get confused to make these crisscross inheritance patterns and there is a probability of making mistakes if you're not very clear. So for them the good news is that you could also uh, demonstrate the mating through a checkered box which is known as the Punnett square. So in the Punnett square we show the uh, gametes, male gametes and the female gametes on the sides outside the box and in the box we show uh, what happens when the fusion of the gametes take place. So in the first box when IA combines with IO what we get is IAIO. If this IA combines with IO then we again get IAIO. If the IO and IO combine with one another, yeah, we get IO, IO, and the fourth box similarly, IO, IO. 
So looking at the probability here, we can see that uh, the offsprings with IAIO have A blood groups and with IOIO have O blood groups, which means that there is 50% probability of children to have O blood group and 50% of the children to have A blood group. Now let us look at some practical applications of these ABO inheritance. One, we can understand or we can uh, figure out the possibilities of the child's blood group if we know that of the parents. ABO inheritance is also useful in case of disputed parentage where the blood groups sometimes help in deciding the cases of dispute parentage. So suppose if a child has a blood group which ideally should not result from the blood group of the couple claiming parentage, then the child has a doubtful parentage. For example, a couple with blood group A and AB cannot have a child with blood group O. The third is we could also go the reverse way and find out the genotype of the parent. So in some instances, when uh, we can determine whether the parent is homozygous or heterozygous. For example, if the father is B positive and the mother is O positive, one child is B positive and the other child is O positive. In such a scenario, it is confirmed that the father would be heterozygous for B, that is, his genotype would be IBIO. In the inheritance of the second system of blood group, which is the RH type, we know that the RH blood group is one where there is the presence of the rhesus factor, which is um, coded by a gene which is called the R gene. Now, those who have the capital R, which is the dominant gene, would produce the RH factor. And those who have the small r recessive in the homozygous state would not have the rhesus factor or the RH factor and they would be RH negative. So the RH inheritance is determined by the gene R which is capital R which is dominant and small r which is recessive. A person who is heterozygous for r that is has a genotype capital R small r or who is homozygous for capital R, which that means that the genotype is capital R, capital R would be RH positive and will produce the RH antigen. Those whose genotype is small r, small r would be homozygous for small r and they are RH negative type. Now let us look at it through an example. The father is Rh negative, that means he has the, he is homozygous for small r. And the mother is heterozygous uh, for Rh positive, that means she has capital R and small r. So the gametes produced by the father are of the similar type, having small r as the uh, allele. While the uh, ova produced by the mother are of two types, one with the capital R and the other type with the small r. Now during the reproduction the offsprings could be either capital R small r or small r small r or again small r capital R or small r small r which means that they may have blood group Rh positive or Rh negative. So the probability of offsprings having Rh positive blood group is 50% and Rh negative blood group is 50%. Erythroblastosis fetalis. Now, this is a situation which is very, very serious, and this happens because of the incompatibility of the Rh blood type in the mother and the baby. Now, 
I happened to find this beautiful illustration uh, in Encyclopedia Britannica to whom I would like to give the credit for making this concept uh, so easy to understand through their illustration. You can find an RH positive father and an RH negative mother here after conception in case the fetus is also RH positive and the mother is RH negative at the time of delivery as the placental detachment happens there is a possibility of the baby's blood and the mother's blood to come in contact with one another so this causes RH positive cells from the fetal blood group to enter into the mother's uh, uh, come in contact with the mother's blood and this causes an immune reaction which leads to the production of RH antibodies. Now these RH antibodies remain in the blood for many years. So during the subsequent pregnancy if the mother again conceives an RH positive baby the RH antigens which are present in the maternal body already would attack the RH positive uh, baby. So this causes uh, the problem called erythroblastosis fetalis. Erythroblastosis fetalis can cause serious complications like severe anemia, severe jaundice, kernicterus, uh, which is a situation where there is um, a lot of bile accumulation in the brain causing brain damage uh, or even Hydrops fetalis where uh, there is edema in places where there ideally should not be any water retention. So these are very serious conditions. Sometimes the baby is also born still. Um, the baby is still born. Um, that is the baby is born dead because of this condition. Um, now we saw that the mixing of the mother and the child's blood happens uh, during the placental disconnection at the time of delivery. Um, the other possibilities uh, where the two bloods could come in contact uh, could also be uh, during a miscarriage or an abortion or if the mother had a fall. Um, it could also happen if there is any prenatal testing procedure done which is invasive in nature such as amniocentesis or uh, chorionic villus sampling. So these are the other ways uh, in which the mother and the child's blood could come in contact and the mother could become sensitive because of the production of these um, RH antibodies. So hope the inheritance of blood group is now demystified and I have been able to explain you the concepts and uh, the way in which inheritance of blood group happens in humans. So what next? Uh, do share your thoughts about the video in the comment section. Feel free to suggest topics that you would want me to uh, explain in subsequent videos for you. Of course, feel free to ask questions and um, seek clarity. And last but not the least, do like, share and subscribe to the channel if you like it.